So I feel that I've been stitched on a number of levels. So the first one is there's still two clippers at this, at this terminal, but I've made a really good deal with the guys up there and they're going to get me through it. And secondly, you've now promised these guys that you were the only I thing. Did, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I apologise, that was my bad. I, I misread the programme so, and I apologise. So, so I neither, I, I am, yeah, yeah, you exactly. now have me, and, and I, don't, I don't have a competition, but I have paid for the drinks. At least I think I have paid for the drinks. So, um, so recovery. So for those of you that don't, don't know me, um, as I say, I'm Liz Williams. In, in my day job, um, I'm a director at BT, but I'm also chair of the Good Things Foundation. And um, it's an absolute privilege to be part of um, two organisations that share a commitment to change lives for the better through the power of digital. I've been part of Good Things for the last six years, and it's, it's, it's just the best thing to be part of, frankly. I've firstly, as a board member, and, and for the last year, I've, I've been chair. And throughout that time, I've been struck by the, the organisation. It is a force for good. It is a bit of magic. It's made up of, I think it's about 50 people in Sheffield. I mean, there, there seems like there's loads. Of, they do so much, but actually there aren't that many of them in Sheffield. And they champion that, that positive role of digital and they power up brilliant grassroots organisations. You guys, the, the, many of you are part of that online centres network. Organisations that, that truly and absolutely get, get their community's needs. And, you know, that for me is something very special. So this digital thing, it just gets bigger and it gets more important. And look, I know, I know I'm preaching to the converted. I know you will get this, but can you just bear with me and remember there are drinks at the end. Um, but, you know... I just want to focus on it for a minute. Um, people talk about our digital economy. Um, increasingly, I, I don't think we, we have a digital economy. I, I think we just have, we just, it's just how we do things. It, it, digital is what we do. I don't know about you, but you know, in my house, if our home hub, hub goes off, I know about it really fast. Now, my daughter, she's a teenager. She rarely emerges for anything other than food or a lift. But if that hub goes off, she's like a racehorse. She is down those stairs, and we know. And, you know, it, it's amazing. Broadband, Wi-Fi, it absolutely powers my world. Um, tech is with me from the moment I get up in the morning, and it, it's to the moment I go to sleep, really. And there are some people that I understand wake up and check their phones as well. But, um, so, you know, is digital simply the economy? And, and I absolutely believe, believe so. But, but what I, I also believe is that, that digital skills provide one if not the biggest opportunity to drive social mobility in the UK. There is a, an increasing gulf between those of us who are absolutely committed to our devices to the degree that we can't live without them, and those who have no intention of engaging with that online world. And you can absolutely understand why they might feel like that. Listen, they've got this far without it. Why do they need it? But the truth is the world has changed around them, and unfortunately we've done that. And, and therefore, because so much of our world does now, our life just depends on the technology, that they, they're, they're going to get left behind. Um, and that social divide will continue to widen until we take Nicola's um, amazing bridge and we bring everybody across that digital divide. And that, that for me, is, is something that, that is incredibly important. And yes, look, a large proportion of digitally excluded people are older, but actually given it's increasingly recognised that we are in the middle of the fourth industrial revolution, the challenge with digital isn't limited to the older generation. At BT, we also see a real paradox amongst the young. We see young people that are grow growing up surrounded by technology. They swipe before they can walk. That really happens now. You know, we know that does. I look at my nieces, you know, they, they are completely tech, tech natives, digital natives, and I don't even know what that term means, and I hate it. Um, but, you know, look, they are... They're passively consuming technology, and very few of them actually know what's going on behind that screen. They don't see, as being, see being active with tech as critical to their future success, and actually it is going to be. You know, tech shapes our modern world, and success for us as individuals, and actually for the UK, is going to really depend on our ability to harness this thing that is technology. Every year at BT, we bring hundreds of people into our business to experience the world of work. And we, we focus on those people who are at risk of disadvantage. We, we prioritize them in our programs. And what we increasingly see is that tech know-how can be a real game changer for their future prospects. 
And with that in mind, in partnership with the brilliant team at Accenture, we've been researching the relationship between social mobility and tech literacy. And the findings are telling. The good news, there is some good news, is that um, all young people have strong foundations when it comes to tech know-how. You know, that, that phone is in their pocket. However, what the research shows is that without concerted effort, we will see double disadvantage. Tech know-how will become another barrier for young people from less privileged backgrounds. Now, there's two ways that story can go. Now, in my version, and the version that I am absolutely determined to play a personal part in making reality, is that we unleash the power of digital to help all young people step up to the judge of the future. Now, the organization that I work for, BT, is equally determined in that endeavor. But, you know, our research has shown today that the attitude of young people to technology is absolutely impacted by their background, their gender, and where they live. And let me share a few stats. Guys, that would be well done. You know, I was staggered to learn that 40% of young people didn't think that technology will change jobs in the next five years. Now, let me just underline the reality of that position. 65% of young people that started school last year will be in jobs that haven't yet been invented. I was less surprised, but frankly no less depressed, depressed by the findings on gender. Men are much more likely to receive encouragement to build tech skills from friends and family. Why? I don't understand that for a minute. And they're also more likely to report that they've had sufficient computer science education at school. What's that about? I, I, you know, look, I'm, a, I'm female, I'm a businesswoman, I'm a mum, I run a home. Tech is part of my life. From the, you know, it absolutely is. Tech know-how is essential. The other thing that we found is that your family's position also matters. We found that young people whose parents had a degree were much more likely to see themselves as tech experts within the next five years. Those whose parents hadn't, you know, had stopped school, uh, stopped their education at school, or had gone on to edu edu vocational education, had completely different aspirations. Big surprise, they were lower. The report also highlights regional disparity. Now, look, you know, Matthew Ryder is going to be really pleased because young Londoners topped the list when it came to aspirations to be expert users of tech. But Northern Ireland, Wales, and the Northeast had the lowest level of ambition to improve their tech skills. Why? And how can we change that and break that cycle? It's just unacceptable. So look, over drinks, I'm happy to debate that with any of you. But one of the things that I think we know in this room is that there are no silver bullets. Our first step to progress has to be understanding the landscape. If we don't know where we are today, how can we build coherent strategies to properly tackle the things that hold people back and risk further entrenching those divides? So I go back to what I said at the beginning, my belief that digital skills provide, if not the biggest opportunity to, to drive social mobility in the UK, certainly one of them. But the key word in that is opportunity. The opportunity exists. It's how we realize it that really matters. And we're still battling massive stereotypes around tech jobs, that they're boring, they're nerdy, they're male-dominated. Listen, they're not. I can show you hundreds of super cool girls in BT, from Rachel, our inspiring MD of IT, through to Charlie, who's one of our grads that's just finished a rotation on BT Sport. They are out there. Tech needs to be much more accessible and inspirational. And we need to help everyone. But, you know, I am genuinely really, really concerned about the next generation. They need to be really encouraged to become curious with technology and see the role it's going to play in their futures. Because it's at the heart of all jobs. It doesn't matter whether it's fashion, whether it's plumbing, whether it's medicine, or whether it's law. Every single one of those jobs is changing with technology. And we couldn't have predicted what those changes were going to look like when I started my career. But it's critical, regardless of age, gender, or ability, that everyone has those core digital skills they need for today's world. So, you know, we have to learn from the past. If we're in a fourth industrial revolution, we really don't want to have the same things that happened before with industrial revolutions, where, you know, we have this period where we have to wait for everybody to catch up. Um, you know, that, that, that's, 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 not, that's not right. Um, the social divide in, in this country is, is in real sharp focus at the moment. And I think the skills divide is actually recognized for what it is, a critical issue for society and actually for the economy. We're making some progress. You know, there is some progress. There is some happy news. Um, 
The right to basic digital skills is enshrined in law, and I'm, you know, I'm pleased that I paid a really small part in that. And you know, uh, the, the stats that um, Lee was sharing earlier from the Lloyds Bank Consumer Digital Index, you know, a million more people acquired digital skills last year. These are things to be pleased about. But are we moving fast enough in the UK? Are we, are we bringing enough people with us? You know, personally, I don't think we are. Um, there's much, much more to do, and it gets harder. You know, when you hear about the example that Nicola gave us, um, Violet, you know, there are hundreds of Violets out there. There are thousands of Violets. How do we help them? Changing, you know, our cultural attitudes to technology and digital liter literacy requires partnership and, and shared vision. And Lee and I have a real shared vision on that. Um, but actually, it needs much more than partnership and it needs much more than collaboration. We have to have structures and mechanisms to coordinate our efforts against a really purposeful set of objectives. There's no lack of energy, there's no lack of will, but what I see as missing is effective coordination. Without that coordinating infrastructure, we really do risk duplicating efforts and missing that really big prize. Um, I don't underestimate the challenge, by the way. I'm not sitting here like some naive woman that kind of goes, oh, we all need to join together and it's gonna be amazing. You know, it's really difficult to orchestrate collective action, but actually, the Good Things Foundation have shown through things like the network and how you can bring that together, that it can be done. Um, and, and it is essential if we're going to really power up that next generation to succeed in this digital world. The private sector, industry, government, charities, social enterprises, all of you in this room, we need to come together much more effectively, identifying those areas of greatest and unmet needs um, and creating compelling end-to-end -end strategies to properly meet them. You know, and, you know, that's going to require some people to come out of their comfort zones. And, um, you know, we have to move beyond individual agendas and work in common cause. Simon talked about the Digital Skills Partnership. Um, both Helen and I are, are on that board. Um, it's not a big group. It's about 20 or so people in total. And a common theme that was heard throughout the planning of it and throughout the first meeting was that it couldn't be another talking shop that it had to be action-centered, and that it had to make impact. And I'm really optimistic, actually, about that tone. Um, I'm even more optimistic because of the people that are around the table. I, I, don't, I didn't know all of them. They weren't all faces that I knew, and that's really good. Others are people that I know well and I really rate. Um, each one of them has been personally selected, not because of who they work for necessarily, but more because of who they are and the value they bring, they bring personally. Um, it's really only days, it's only met once, um, um, and let's be clear, pace is really critical on this. Um, nobody wants a group that navel gazes for months kind of working out what we're here for. You know, that, 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 I've got no interest in that. They've identified four early priorities, um, and each one is forming as a work stream. The first is education, um, particularly the need for better computer science teaching in schools. I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. Digital enterprise, um, to increase um, motivation and... Uh, and digital business amongst SMEs and charities. The third is, and it's a bit of a weird title, National Coherence of Digital Skills Provision. But look, this is an area close to my heart because you know, understanding the current landscape and having simple common language about what we actually mean by digital skills provision is really important. And creating an end-to-end -end strategy is, is, that drives impact is really vital. And then the fourth and the final work stream that's been set up, they mentioned earlier, is local. And everyone in this room knows that ultimately digital skills for, for, you know, acquisition, it's, it's a deeply personal thing. Every individual has different motivation, they'll be inspired differently and they'll have very different goals. And there are, there are few, uh, any, parts of the UK that currently have a joined up picture of all the parts of their digital journey from basic digital skills that you need to participate to shop, pay bills, watch TV to general digital skills that you increasingly need to all jobs, through to those advanced digital skills for, for tech roles. And the local digital skills partnerships are planned to tackle that gap. And I hear that one of the Good Things family is going to play a, a significant role in shaping the first of these. It's in a part of the country known for the finest cream teas. Um, I don't think I can say any more than that, although I have noticed that Simon has left because last time I said something, DCMS told me off afterwards. So I'm trying to be good today. So look, there is a really long way to go, but I'm encouraged. The conversation is genuinely turning um, about how we turn up, um, we, we kind of 
turn our conversations to more systematically respond to this agenda. So it's not just people working in isolation, but how we power up people at the sharp end. That's you. Um, we stop and we stop duplication and we make a really demonstrable difference. I want to close, and I'm really sorry, and I know I'm, I'm just holding you away from drinks, but I want to close on a slightly different note. Um, last month, um, Get Online Week inspired 44,000 people to get involved with digital and try one thing. 44,000 people. How amazing is that? Can I just ask for a round of applause for everybody that was part of that? I know that many of you in this room were part of that story. Um, you're the people that are there day in, day out, working in your communities, helping individuals take their first steps with digital and seeing where it can take them. And I know that what you do is you guide and you coach and you cajole and you, you bring that, that combination of the local faces that are the online centers network and the brilliant tools that the guys from Good Things bring, things like, you know, learn my way. And that's what makes a difference. You all know what, what, who you are and, and you know what you do and you know how hard it can be. Um, but I want to say to you that you're absolutely inspirational and I just want to say thank you for everything that you do. Um, good Things is synonymous with digital participation, but in truth, all of us here are working at the intersection of social and digital, um, delivering activity that helps people become digitally included and that leads to social inclusion. And that's been the theme throughout today, helping people tackle poverty, health issues, low self-esteem, loneliness, that list goes on. You know, I want to thank you for all of those amazing things, the lives you change, and I want you to keep doing it, please. Um, it's really vital, and you are genuinely brilliant at it. In return, the thing I will promise you is that the whole team at Good Things will be there for you, in your corner, on the phone when you need us, to guys in the network office, and at the table lobbying and campaigning on your behalf, because ensuring that collectively we can make that difference in the national debate is vital. And, and ultimately, it's about us together ensuring that everybody in the UK can genuinely thrive in this new digital world. Thank you. <laughs>